Today I have a craft video for you that is all about scrap busting, so creating amazing little items and projects using scrap pieces of fabric. So today I'm going to be using some amazing fabrics from Voyage Mason. They have a fantastic outlet section where you can buy end of rolls and off cuts and things like that which is perfect for keeping in your craft stash or even for like making small little projects. So I've got a few projects to show you, one using a bigger piece of scrap and then smaller pieces as well, just so you've got a variety and you can really get creative with your scrap pieces of fabric. So before I get started, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and we're going to get straight on into it. So Voyage Mason have a really lovely like craft section, I'll leave a link in the description box below to their website so you can go check them out for yourselves. And they gave me a selection of fabrics to show you guys from their outlet section and all of these fabrics yes they're quite they're quite big for necessarily a scrap but i just wanted to show you for the purpose of this video we have three projects in this video and i don't want to ramble on too much because obviously with three projects there's a lot to get through um so i'm going to show you a notebook cover so, so i've got this notebook that was just in my drawer already in my stash so we're doing a bit of upcycling here and I'm going to use this one. It's fairly flat, but I would recommend if you've got a hardback notebook, it does work better on a hardback notebook. Uh, it doesn't require a sewing machine. We're going to be using PVA glue and scissors and that's it. Project number two is for all those sewers out there. Or if you know someone that loves sewing, then this is a lovely gift idea. And that is a pin cushion. And scrap fabrics are perfect for making little pin cushions. And then project number three, another easy one, which is just great for beginners, but also a really lovely and special thing to make for someone as a, a gift. And that is a pillowcase. So obviously this is using a bigger piece of scrap, but I just thought this fabric, this is obviously off the roll from Voyage Mason. I just thought this was so gorgeous that I just had to make a cushion out of this. It's essentially a square piece of sewing so super easy super quick tutorial they're the three projects that i'm going to be showing you in this video and we're going to get straight on into it because there's a lot to cover so for this project of the book cover i'm going to use this really gorgeous fabric you can use like a cotton or canvas or anything like that um, this has got a nice sort of thickness to it so i think it'll be quite easy to work with you want a liquid glue rather than a hot glue gun super easy we just need to lay this out flat. If your print has one direction to it, make sure the direction is facing the right way. So I know that when I cover this book, the print is gonna be in the right direction, not upside down. So as you can see, this piece of fabric is such a small piece that you could really do this with any sort of scrap, which is amazing. So I'm actually gonna trim, so there's just about an inch all the way around um, rather than too much overhang it will just make the process a lot easier so once your piece of fabric is ready we can go ahead and start putting the glue on the back cover I'm actually going to use Mod Podge I just remembered that I had this um, this is a really great sealant and finish so we're going to use that first so we're going to actually use this and then you will need a paintbrush as well you just want to paint it onto the back of your notebook and whilst you're here do a tiny bit on the spine as well okay so what you want to do move your notebook up to the other side and then you take your piece of fabric fold it over and you're going to carefully rub your hands over the notebook you want to make sure there's no bubbles or no creases and that is super super smooth and then push it towards the spine hold it together nice and tightly turn it over and we can now work on this side so 
same with this side you fold over the fabric and just use your hands and your fingertips to tightly press that onto the cover so the next stage is gluing in the inside edges so what you want to do is open it up as much as you can and glue your corners in first like this and then you might be wondering how we're going to do these side bits so actually what you want to do is get your scissors and cut a line to where the book join is so just to there once you've done that you can easily fold these over if like me you've got this page in the way then what I might do is just cut or just bend that across like that actually use a bit of glue fold that in like that and that way you can easily fold it over So once that's done guys you want to leave it to dry for a little bit because obviously when doing the other side you're going to have to have this book closed so just let that dry for a good 5-10 minutes before moving on to the next part. So once your book is covered, so we've done both sides in the same way, so now what we want to do is find a way to just do the finishing touches and tuck in these little tabs here. So. If you've got a hardcover book, it's a lot easier because you can just sort of like fold them in. We'll trim that back about half a centimetre next to the book. And then if you open it, you'll see you kind of get this little like gaping sort of look there. Now quite fiddly, but you can get a sewing pin or something like that and you just want to sort of tuck it in to that hole like this and there we have it there is the finished notebook it's super cute really easy to do and I just think it looks really gorgeous you could even add a piece of ribbon in there as well so you've got like an extra touch um, if you wanted to add like a matching colour so you could do like a lilac ribbon or something as like a placeholder um, but there's the front and back and then obviously the finishing touches where we tucked in those tabs. And yeah, that's it. Really quick and easy and really effective. Great way to use up some scrap fabric. So next up, we're gonna be making the pin cushion. So for this, I've just got something round from my craft stash. You can use anything, a plate or whatever you have, but I'm just gonna use the inside of this uh, embroidery hoop. So the embroidery hoop is about 19 centimetres in circumference. So just so you know roughly what size I'm making mine. But obviously you can make this in any size that you want. Then got a piece of wadding or teddy bear stuffing. You can find these in old cushions. If there's cushions you don't use anymore, you can use the stuffing inside or you can buy the wadding quite easily online. So yeah, I've just got a nice big chunk there. I then found this really pretty ribbon in my craft stash. Again, this is just things that I keep hold of, which is great for upcycling projects. I've got some embroidery thread. So again, just utilizing things that are in my stash. You can use whatever cotton, yarns, or whatever you have. And then a scrap piece of felt like this. We'll then need a needle and thread, and that's it. So to start off with, you've got your scrap piece of fabric. Just turn that around. Place on your circular item, whether it's a plate or whatever you have. We're just going to draw around this shape. Make sure it's you know as flat as you can. I'm actually going to draw around about a centimetre. Once you have your shape drawn on, you just want to cut that out. Okay, so cut your loop of ribbon. With a loop of ribbon, you want to attach the ends of it together like that so it creates a nice little circle. So you can just put a couple of stitches in there to 
attach those together. Once that's done, just pop that to one side for now. So the next step is we're going to do a running stitch all the way around the edge of your circle. And this is a really easy stitch to do by hand. Just want to thread up your needle, so I'm just using any um, thread that I had to hand. This is personal choice, but I always double my thread just to make it a bit stronger. So just start anywhere on your project. About half a centimetre from the edge, you just want to pop your needle in. I've popped a knot, it's quite important, knot to the end of your thread. So pop your needle in and then you're just going to do a rough running stitch like this. All the way around. If you notice you're starting to run out of threads, just gather these in. Okay, so we're back at the start now. So what you want to do is now that you're back at the start, slowly pull the threads all the way around and you just want to gently gather it to so create like a little pocket almost like this. Keep that open and we're going to put our teddy bear stuffing slash wadding inside. Like that. And then we're going to gently keep gathering, keep pulling it. Pull, 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 pull. Until it kind of reaches that point where it's like this. So this is a good time to check if you're happy with the stuffing inside. I, I'm pretty happy with that, I think that's good. I quite like the little gathered effect as well at the bottom here. And then you want to keep that as nice and tight as possible. And then you're going to slowly just stitch through that bunch of gathers. Okay, so once you're happy with that, you just want to do one more loop of stitching and before you finish that stitch, just pop your needle through the loop to create a nice little knot and just cut that thread off. So once we have that looking lovely, we can move on to the next step which is with the embroidery thread. So for this, just get yourself a length of embroidery thread or yarn, whatever you have. And you'll need a needle that has like a thicker eye to it. Pop a knot in the end of your thread. So what you want to do is get your needle with your thread attached and pop it through the gathered bit in the middle and you want to bring it up and through the pin cushion, preferably at a central point. So this might take a little bit of trial and error here. Say roughly about there, once you're happy with the placement of where that is, just pull that on through. So you've got that like this, you then want to pull that and place it back through the middle again, like that. And just pull it ever so slightly so you get this kind of puckering in the side there. Same again, so we're gonna do this one, two, three, four, five, six, about eight times. So, so you wanna do your quarter bit, your quarter points, essentially. So once you have your quarters done like that you then want to do the same again with your eighths so once you have your little things done like your threads done you can then go on and sew on your ribbon so just place that bit that join in the center 
bring your embroidery thread through it like that and just stitch through back to the bottom and then once you have it like that if you've got a little button to spare you can place a little button in there like that just to conceal it so this button's probably a bit big to be honest but <laughs> um, yeah let me go find a different button just so I found this little pink button which is perfect so I'm just gonna sew that on so once your button is stitched on and so is your ribbon it's getting there it's nearly finished but we need to conceal the work that we did on the bottom bit so get your felt and you can either cut this in a little circle a little flower a heart whatever you want to do really you can get super creative but I'm just gonna do I think just a little circle just to keep it really straightforward a little bit of felt like this if you're being super lazy you could use a glue gun and glue that on or you can just use your same yarns and do some nice little stitching around the edging so I'm just gonna do that because I think that'll look really pretty and just finish it off and there we have it you guys a really simple and very cute little pin cushion and there's the little finished underneath layer as well with the felt there so you can sort of see the the underwork if you like but yeah super cute and super easy to do Ta -da! so yeah what do you think So now moving on to the cushion, so super easy to do, just going to take a cushion insert, you can get these like I mentioned from Wilco Ikea, um, I'm just recycling one that I had in the house that I didn't use anymore. And then with our fabric, what we want to do is just lay it out flat and then depending on the size of your cushion, so this one is a 46 by 46 centimetre or 18 by 18 inch cushion so that's our kind of measurement basis for our project again because this print has a direction to it it all faces in the same way you just want to make sure that you're happy with the placement of the print of the fabric so I always just double check that before I start cutting out we want a rainbow and a unicorn within sort of one square if you like just try and make that the central point of our cushion and then it'll it'll do up on the back of the cushion um, and then it's 18 inches across so we'll do that is our central point as I said 18 by 18 so that's 18 there like that and we're marking it on the wrong side so you won't see any of the pen marks but you can use Taylor's chalk if you've got it to hand and in terms of seam allowance, if we just do a one centimetre seam allowance all the way around. So then to make it nice and easy, we're going to measure where our point was on the side there. And because we've got this nice clean edge from the roll of fabric, we can utilise that. This is the, obviously the selvage. We can utilise that to measure um, from our seam allowance to the edge. So that's about just over 12 centimetres. So we can go across and just mark just over 12 centimetres. Once you've marked all the way down, as long as you need, you can just cut this bit, you can cut this piece first, and then we can use that line as the guide for our next measurement. So once we have this cut, we can then measure from that line our 18 inches plus our seam allowance, so 18 inches plus two centimetres. Um, which actually worked out as just pretty much 19 inches um, so we'll just mark 19 inches from that edge do the same thing as before just mark it with a pen and then we'll cut it out here we are here's our fabric so it's measuring about 40 inches long and then 19 inches wide to fit our cushion and we've got essentially a rectangular fabric here. So what you wanna do is right side to right side, like so. 
making sure that your section that you wanted in the middle of your cushion, which we obviously cut out because we wanted to make sure we had a little rainbow and a unicorn on one side. So just fold your cushion pieces in. So this measurement, once you folded it, should measure 18 inches, which it does, which is great. So what you want to do is just fold up that bit's already folded upwards as you can see and then you want to fold this bit up as well just finger press that downwards and because it's quite a nice thick fabric it should stay pretty much straight I've got that button from earlier and I'm going to this is optional if you don't have a sewing machine don't worry about it but I'm going to pop a buttonhole on the center of this piece of cushion so the bit that's underneath when you turn it the right say right side out will be the bit that's exposed so we just want to pop a buttonhole on the central point so just fold that in half and you want to pop a pin where that fold is so we basically just want to pop a buttonhole to fit that button just on that central point and then we can go ahead and do the next step, which was sew these sides. So once that's sewn guys, all you wanna do is just clip your corners. Obviously don't clip it into your stitching, you just wanna clip them nice and neat and then trim off any excess that you need to. So once that's sewn together guys and you've clipped your corners, we can now turn it inside out. Well turn it the right way out rather. <laughs> so if you created a little buttonhole, you just want to pop a pin in the top of it and then you can use a seam ripper to open it up and that pin just stops it from ripping all the way through. And now for the fun bit you guys, we can put in our cushion. Ta-da! And there you have it. A recycled fabric cushion cover. So you can use up some gorgeous pieces of fabric you have left over, or you can shop the Voyage Mason outlet if you want some really fancy and lovely quality fabrics, just like this one. I absolutely love this little cushion. It's gonna be so cute in my little girl's room, or I might even gift it to my niece. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Um, but yeah, really, really cute and super easy to do, great for beginners or great for gifting if you'd like to make some little cushions for people for Christmas presents, things like that. So yeah, so there we have it you guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing those three fabric scrap busting projects. And we have this gorgeous little cushion, which I just think is so lovely and yeah, perfect if you've got like obviously bigger pieces of scrap fabric and then obviously the little fabric covered notebook and the pin cushion as well. So really lovely projects, perfect for beginner crafters if you fancy making some of your own gifts this Christmas or you just fancy making some nice things around the home with some fabric that you have left over. I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make them and then obviously check out Voyage Mason. I'll leave the link in the description box below. As I mentioned, they have an outlet section, so some lovely fabrics and haberdashery and other bits and bobs that you can find over on the outlet section, which is really nice and perfect for, you know, uh, offcuts of fabrics and things like that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if there's a project that you liked the most and if you're going to be trying to make it for yourself or for a friend or something. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.